Hello, this is Sarah from The Proverbial Life, and I just wanted to encourage you all with some truths that were so encouraging to me and revolving around one of the characters in a classic book, which I hope that you guys have read before. If you haven't read it and you've only seen the movie, you're going to have to read the book. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for the audiobook that we're currently going through. It's free online and the, uh, I don't know if you'd call him a vocalist or <laughs> an actor, but uh, the reading that we've been going through has been very entertaining and, and just really beautifully well done. So the title of this is Don't Be Like Denthor. And if you're familiar with the storyline of The Lord of the Rings at all, there is great evil afoot and there is a steward of Gondor, which is one of the locations in Middle Earth that is feeling the intense wrath of the enemy, Saruman. And in a sense, they're a, a pivotal kind of one of the last, the last stronghold of uh, I would say maybe truth, beauty, goodness, and uh, in on Middle Earth. And uh, when I read this part of the book, so this is uh, in the Return of the King, so the last one, it really ministered to me a lot. And I love how fiction can do that for you. And because you're just disarmed and then these truths can slip in really easily. And it's a great way to also you know, just have great conversations with your children as well. So we've been going through uh, the Lord of the Rings and I just thought the character Denethor was so just viable to what we're going through right now. And so I just want to share with you a little bit about him. But so he's the steward of Gondor, which is basically like the king, but not exactly because he's just stewarding it for the real king to come because, um, you know, there's been a long line of kings that they just had to like replace it with a steward. I'll just kind of put it that way. <laughs> and so anyways, uh, but you know, he has two sons and, um, he has essentially just been overcome with despair. And I'm just going to read a little bit of, this is uh, the end that Denethor has come to. And so I'm going to kind of show you the end first, but not give away a ton of details and then kind of unfold that to how that can be really encouraging for us today, even though it is uh, not, it's very tragic, but how we cannot be like that. So anyways, this is from the chapter of the Pyre of Denethor. And again, this is the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, J.R.R. Tolkien. Though the stewards deemed that it was a secret kept only by themselves, long ago I guessed that here in the White Tower, one at least of the seven seeing stones was preserved. Okay, so that's Gandalf talking. And he is referring to seven seeing stones that used to be used for the kings to be able to communicate with each other throughout uh the other various kingdoms and then they could communicate across the miles essentially but now they've been turned to evil uses and so i'm going to continue <clears throat> in the days of his wisdom denethor would not presume to use it to challenge saruan which is the enemy knowing the limits of his own strength but his wisdom failed and i fear that as the peril of his realm grew he looked in the stone and was deceived Far too often, I guess, since Boromir departed, his son, who ended up going in to the Fellowship of the Ring, and I'm not going to tell you what happened. <laughs> he was too great to be subdued to the will of the dark power. He saw nonetheless only those things which that power permitted him to see. The knowledge which he obtained was, doubtless, often of service to him, yet the vision of the great might of Mordor that is the enemy's realm, 
that was shown to him fed the despair of his heart until it overthrew his mind. Okay, so now Denethor, as you see him introduced, he is very... Uh, he's very rude and edgy and like when my daughter when we were reading it my daughter said mom I don't like him I can't believe he's being so rude to Pippin and Gandalf and you see he's just he's very uh, jaded and he's not so so that's how he initially comes across and and then you see how and come kind of combative um there's a lot of tension between him and Gandalf and you see how he essentially this stone as he's been looking into this stone and he's been seeing the plans of the enemy unfold and seeing the attacks that are coming on many fronts as he's also in the midst of fighting them on those certain fronts and now at this point there's a climax where the enemy is essentially at his doorstep and he continues to look into the stone and one of his sons has been injured and he the longer that he looks into this stone and, and the time that he spent looking into the stone it really just fills him with despair and he it it does drive him mad as as Gandalf described and he makes decisions that he normally you wouldn't have done and he also neglects the duties that he was given to do in stewarding this kingdom and there are, you know, captains of his army banging on his door. Like, what? What's the call? What's the play here? What are we going to do? You know, we're being attacked. And he's been completely disabled, essentially, by this despair that's overcome him due to seeing the plans of the enemy on a large scale and all these fronts on him. And not just him, but, you know, elsewhere. And all his might and his resources... Uh, have been shown to him through that stone. And so you see how he has become very hardened by what he saw and tense and, you know, just awful <laughs> to be around. And also he's neglected the duties that he was given to do in stewarding this kingdom and he has no battle plan now he just he essentially just gives up and then he um i don't know if i should give too much away but <laughs> he 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 does some pretty awful things and ends up even taking his own life and his kingdom is now just in complete turmoil well i mean not in complete turmoil but I would say his leadership, his legacy is, is just, it's not good. <laughs> and so what that reminded me of, honestly, was just the tension that we have, those of us that are really trying to uh, be aware of all that is coming down the pipeline in uh, maybe your specific state and in obviously our country and globally. There is a danger in not filtering that through the lens of scripture and what we know to be true about God and his character. And I think I definitely have a tension of going to these resources as Denethor did to the stone and seeing the, the plans and the plots of the enemy of our souls and of humanity hidden in plain sight, if you will. And it, it's, it can be very disturbing. It should disturb him, but because it's, it's just, it's downright evil. And there is, 
that tension of that we do need to be informed. We do need to be know. We didn't. We need to know what is going on. We cannot be just sticking our head in the sand and throwing the fight, if you will. But we also can't be on the other side where Denethor he he had seen so much and it overcame him and he was left just immobile and paralyzed and hardened and prideful and not of good use to his kingdom anymore and it it really did a disservice to everyone around him and he did not give any account for the X factors, if you will, of provenance that were at work ar- ar- among him. And so I think, I hope that would encourage you that in all that we are facing and seeing coming down the pipeline and just these agendas that are very wicked and evil that are afoot and have been for a long time that the Lord is in control. He truly is. And I just, I want to encourage you saints to really temper the time that you spend looking in the stones of social media or where YouTube and, you know, wherever you, you are getting your information from and doing your research. I, I do commend you to do that, but also to make sure that you temper it and don't, don't be like Denethor and don't let it paralyze you where you're ineffective to, you know, your kingdom of your home and where it affects your relationships. And I I want you to be hopeful in that the Lord is the X factor. And there are so many things that the enemy is not accounted for, just like it in in the Lord of the Rings, that there there were so many providences that just lined up exactly. And I know that it's fiction, but that's what's so great about it is that your 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 guard is down to 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 be able to accept and to see certain truths that you might not have otherwise and so i just i was so encouraged by that and i really hope that that's encouraging to you just to first off if if you're if you want to check out in some way don't check out on social media but check out and get into an audiobook like this or you know something else and I I know you'd be blessed by it. So I just do want to encourage you to continue to filter all that you're facing on so many different angles through the word of God and to continue to remind yourself and all that you see around you and all that you see coming down the pipeline that God is the X factor. And there's so much that is unaccounted for and by the enemy. And I do want to leave you with this verse also. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20, starting in verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, after that those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. So be encouraged, saints. I hope that really ministers to you. And I just want to encourage you again, take a lesson from 
the steward of Gondor, Denethor, and let that encourage you to continue to look to Christ. Let that help you to live wisely and in your interactions with social media and doing your research and, you know, just living life, <laughs> all that you're seeing around you, please be wise and filter that with what you know of God's character and what you know of scripture and do not be overcome to despair and paralysis where you are actually tearing down your legacy with your own hands and doing a disservice obviously then to what you've been called to steward before God. So please be encouraged and I hope that would really help give you a picture of something that you can hold on to and definitely definitely also I would encourage you now would be a great time to just get into something true good and beautiful like the work of JRR token and if you're going to check out check out in that kind of a way and make some memories with your kids and you know we've had some really great conversations as a result of it so don't be like Denethor but look to Christ live wisely and crush that legacy okay thanks guys <laughs>